Zelda. We rely on your knight, and that legendary sword he carries. Our last line of defense will be Link. Link. Hi everyone, this is Yang. In this video, you will learn how to get the strongest weapon in Tears of the Kingdom. Firstly, you need to get a Royal Guard's Claymore. For that, you need to go to the Hyrule Castle, which is the only place where you can find weapons of this kind. So make your way to Hyrule Castle. You can teleport to Serut Bomak Shrine. Or just fly there all the way from Lookout Landing. Once in the Hyrule Castle, there are many Royal Guards claymores. For example, there is one in the Princess Zelda's room. There is also one at the Sanctum. So let's go there. Go to the third floor and find the Royal Guards claymore behind the boulders. However, this one is the decayed version of the Royal Guards claymore. In order to get the non-decayed one, or also called the pristine version of it, you need to break this one. And then the pristine version of this weapon will spawn in the hands of the ghost soldiers in the depths. But not all ghost soldiers will have the pristine version of the Royal Guard's Claymore, only a few of them will do. A good location is the soldier near the Corum Light Route. If you have not discovered it yet, just fast travel to Sahasra Sloped Tower and enter this castle. You will find this light route easily. Let's teleport there. Go to this spot on the map. It's important that you save the game before the soldier renders, because the weapon the soldier is holding is not always the Royal Guard's Claymore, so it's possible that another weapon is rendered, and you would need to load the save and check again. Actually, there are 5 possible weapons, so there is only a 20% chance you get this weapon. Once you find the ghost soldier holding the weapon you want, don't pick up the weapon right away. Instead, do this. Save in front of him. Then pick it up. What we want to see is a plus 10 attack modifier. In case we don't get it, we can reload the save over and over until we get the modifier we want. If you got it, then congratulations. You can go to the next step. If after a few tries, you are only getting white modifiers and not the yellow ones, then it means that you are still early in the game. You need to pick it up and upgrade it using Octorox. This is also useful if you forgot to save and pick up the weapon with the wrong modifier, because you can also use Octorox to refresh the modifier. Amazing, right? Go to Memorstic Shrine. And save the game. You will find some Octorok here. Feed the Claymore to him. When he spits it out, you can see that the modifier has been changed, and if you are lucky enough, you will get the plus 10 attack modifier. If it's not the modifier we are looking for, just keep loading the save until you get it. There are more Octoroks around the area. So you can actually upgrade a weapon that had no modifier to a weapon with plus 10 attack golden modifier by doing this process twice using two different Octoroks. 
now you have an attack damage of 49, which is 39 plus 10. At this moment, you need to find an armor set that boosts this damage even more. For that, we can go to Kakariko village and buy the Radiant armor set. This is quite expensive, but you can do a set quest to make it cheaper, or you can just duplicate the diamonds and sell them using my item duplication videos. Links are in the description. An alternative armor set is the Evil Spirit armor set. This has the same effect and can be obtained from the labyrinths. Plus, it gives you stealth effects, which makes sneak strikes much easier to do. Once you have the three radiance armor parts, uh. upgrade the armor set to two stars by going to a fairy fountain. If you chose the evil spirit armor set, you don't have to upgrade it. Next, you should add more damage to your weapon by cooking food that give you bonus damage. For that, take out four mighty bananas and one dragon horn, so that the buff can last 30 minutes. Now you need to damage the Royal Guard's Claymore until it's about to break. When this message shows up, it means you will get a 2x damage multiplier because this type of weapons doubles their damage when they have low durability. If you do 2 more hits to a weapon, it will gain another hidden extra 2x multiplier because the weapon has only 1 durability left and will break on the next hit which will cause double damage. Lastly, you need to find a Gibdo Bone, which is the fused material that adds the most damage to a weapon. Gibdos can be found at Gerudo Desert and Gerudo Desert Depths. Here, you should know that fusing materials to a weapon gives extra durability, which removes the weapon's previous double damage state, but the potential durability addition is limited and can be consumed, so you must fuse something else to the Royal Guard's Claymore, for example, a silver lino horn, and then bring the durability to 1 again. When this message appears, hit the ground twice. And now it's the time to fuse the bone to the Royal Guard's Claymore. At this moment, we will have an attack damage of 356. Next, take into account the effect of the Radiant Armor set or the Evil Spirit Armor set. This time, we will get another 1.8 multiplier from Bone Proficiency. Next, eat the food cooked with Mighty Bananas. Then, we will get another 1.5 multiplier from the food buff. Now, we have an attack damage of 961. Also, if you hit the weak spot of the enemy, such as Gleok's head or Hinox's eye, you can do double damage, which will be 1921. And if you do Sneak Strike, you can deal up to 7,700 damage. Before trying out this weapon, you might want to duplicate it to have a full bag of the strongest weapon in Tears of the Kingdom. You can use this weapon duplication glitch that works on all versions shown here. Link will also be in the description. Alright, all set. Now let's give the weapon a try with the enemies. Instead of fusing a Gipto Bone, you can also choose to fuse a Moduga Jaw to it. This gives less damage, but it will allow you to use it while you are on a Lando's back. 